Okay, the next section is 5.3 standard deviation. We'll begin with the example in the book. So you're coaching a team and you have five players who you could substitute into the game. Now, the problem here posed to us uh, here is how can a coach use the data to determine which players should be substituted into the game? Now, the first step you may want to carry out is just calculate the mean for each of the players. So we have the scores or the total scores for the last 10 games that they played. And just a reminder, uh, to complete mean, and mean is represented by x bar, you add up all the scores and divide by the number there. Now there's a formula that this is represented by statistics. And I'll explain this in a second. Now this symbol here means summation. It means you're going to add up all the numbers and x represents each individual number. So here these are our different x values. So we're going to add each of these together and then we would divide by n which is the number of scores there. In this case the number of scores will be 10. And now I'll fill in the values for each of the means. We have 36 decimal 7, 36 decimal 4, 35 decimal 8, 33 decimal 9, and last 36 decimal 3. Now the means uh, don't vary a lot. Uh, we can look at perhaps there's one that differs from Molson, which would be page, and but not a significant difference. Uh, and if you did decide not to include her, the others are very close together. So we need another method of determining how close they are, or which is the better player. And what we're going to look at is this idea now of standard deviation. And we're, what we're going to find is how far each number is away from the uh, the mean. So deviation, so we'll begin with those definitions over here. So deviation is difference between a, a data value and the mean for that same data set. And standard deviation is a measure of the dispersion or scatter of the data values to relation. And we'll come back to the other parts of definition in a moment. So our first step is to take each number and subtract it from the mean. That'll give us the deviation. And I'm going to include more columns in this table, more than what I probably normally would, but just as we're demonstrating through. Next step is to take each of the scores and subtract it from the mean. So I've written the scores for Anna going down the side here. And what I do now is subtract each of these from the mean. So 36.7 and value from that is negative zero decimal seven. So we'll do that here. Square the value. So I'll complete each of those steps now going down through. All right. So, again, take the score, subtract it from the mean. You then take the answer that you obtain and square it. And you do that for each of the numbers in the set listed here. Okay, now that I've done that for each of the scores, this is the deviation. This will be the deviation squared. The last step is to find the total of the deviation squared. 300 
34.19. Now, so that's all the totals of the deviations from the points given there. Now, I divide this number by the number of scores that we have. So I would have decimal 9 divided by 10. That will leave me with 33 decimal 49. The last step is to then take the square root of that number and we'll come back with a standard deviation of 5 decimal 8 when rounded. Now what that means is that Anna on average during a game she her average score is 36 decimal 7 but she could go 5 points higher or 5 points less on any particular game so it doesn't show a lot of uh, consistency with her now we'll do that with each of the next players going down through and there is a faster way to, to do all this and you can use a graphing calculator or another program such as Excel to do it and if I go here so if I turn my calculator I'll clear the screen and I go second function stat sorry stat and edit Now I already have my list of numbers in there. So these are Anna scores and the rest of them for the other players. So each of her scores are there already entered. And what I can do then is push stat. Now I'm going to go to calculate and one variable statistics. I put in L1. Sometimes you don't need to because it will be there by default. But L1 just to be sure we get the correct list. So right away, it's told me the mean, which we had to calculate by hand, but now if it's into the calculator, it will generate that for us. The sum of all of our scores. And down here now, it's giving us our standard deviation. So they have 5.88. Uh, I calculate it 5.8. And the difference will be due to uh, rounding or dropping at decimal points as you're going through calculations. So that can be done very quickly. Right, and I'll enter each of those values now for the rest of the players. And we're looking to see who's the most consistent player. Okay, now that I've completed the standard deviations for the rest of the scores, we see that uh, Patrish has a deviation 1.5. Morgan 9.0, Page 0 0.83, and Star 3.34. Now, the smaller the deviation, the more consistent the person is. So if we look at the scores here for Page, uh, her deviation is less than one point. And if you look through each game, she differs 33, 34, 35, 33, 34. So there's not a lot of difference in each of those scores which shows that although her average may be lower than the other players, she's a more consistent player, so more reliable. Uh, perhaps one of the better players in terms, uh, in terms of consistency and higher average would be uh, Patrish. And if we look at her scores for a minute, we can see that she has an average of 36.4. And she can be, she would deviate no more than about 1.5 points from that. So when we take all this in consideration, just move this out of the way here, we now get a reliable measure of where each player is going to perform. So again, Anna, uh, this value would mean she would score this much less than her average, or she could have just much of a chance of scoring that much higher. So this would be the range of her scores. And if we look at Patricia, she would go anywhere from about 35 baskets up to about 38. Uh, Morgan has a 
highest standard deviation of nine baskets, which shows are extremely unreliable. She can be counted on to get uh, no less than about 27 baskets, but on average no higher than about 34 baskets, or 35 baskets. Down through to, again, we look at Paige, she's going to get somewhere around 33 baskets. And if we look back through each of her piece of data, she scored at no time less than 33, but on average no higher than 35. And then Star, we see her range from about 33 baskets up to about 40. Now, as we get more into this, we'll learn more about how uh, the data will be distributed, and but generally this is what we would see from each of them. Now, just give a quick recap over each of the steps. So for any one player, uh, you would take all their scores, find the average. Then you find the deviation of each of the scores from this average. So as I've done that with Anna here, you take each of the scores, subtract them from their average. You then have to take that deviation from the average, square it, and you do that for each of the scores. Find the total. Divide by the number of scores there and take the square root to get the standard deviation. And all that is summarized with this formula here. And this formula is our standard deviation formula. So what it's asking you to do is take each score, subtract it from the average, square it, and then this sign here, sigma again, as we mentioned earlier, when you're finding average, sigma means to add up all those scores, which is what we had done here. Then you divide by the number of scores that you have, and then find the square root. Now this is a lengthy process. Uh, Maybe faster to use a calculator or again Microsoft Excel or some other program.